Hello everyone, welcome to Magical Me. I'm Jamie Mendez, spiritual intuitive and oracle, and I'm here with my weekly moon day guidance. This is gonna be a message for the collective utilizing uh, oracle cards as well as my own intuitive abilities to bring forward the interpretation that comes through with those cards uh, for the week of November 8th, 2021. These are not individualized personal readings here that I'm doing today. They are a generalized overview for all of us, really giving us some insight into uh, the energy theme of the week and what we can expect. So before I go into a little bit more about what uh, I'll be doing here this evening, I'll just take a second and make sure that everyone is able to see that I'm live and to hear me okay. So if you are tuning in, feel free to just drop a comment saying hello. Let me know you're here. Hey, Angela. Welcome, gorgeous. Yes, you did. Thank you so much for being here. How it, does it sound for you? Is it, is it loud enough? Is it sound a little low? Oh, good. Awesome. Hi, Fred. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Just gonna just do a quick mic check just to be sure too. And hopefully all is well. So how are you all doing on this uh, magical moon day? It was a gorgeous, gorgeous day for November here in New Jersey. Um, we do not often get days like this. It was beautifully, beautifully bright, sunny, and warm. So uh, probably a few of the last of those days. Hey, Caitlin. Welcome, beautiful. So um, I hope that you're doing well. Thank you for being here. Let me know if there's any problem with the sound quality. <laughs> hey, Karen. <laughs> Thanks for popping in, guys. So I'm just going to go ahead and start to share really quickly. So that's done and out of the way. Hello, Moniel. Welcome, gorgeous. Thank you so much for being here. Carmela, welcome, love. So how y'all feeling? Some interesting vibes today. Oh, let me see if I can do this right because they've been being really tricky tricky now with how this works to share, which I don't understand. Thinks so I did it. Oh, quite the mood, huh? Ooh. Is that like, you know, good? <laughs> or is it not so good? <laughs> hey, Annie. Welcome, beautiful. Jillian, welcome. Oh. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to have to keep you around for all the flattery. <laughs> Because <laughs> you are always doing that and complimenting, and I love that, and I love you, so thank you for that. Yeah, this, you know, it just kind of took on a uh, vibe all on its own today. The color choices that I chose. I was going for something completely different, and, you know, I got, like, kind of fiery Morgan that came out. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to roll with that. Definitely not good. Oh, Moniel. Well, you know, I completely understand why I give an energy and I'm going to talk about that. So maybe that'll shine a little light on what's going on. Um, you know, maybe some things that come forward today that can actually help with that energy. Okay. Oh, thanks, Carm. <laughs> Freddie, is that you or is that Karen? Because... <laughs> So weird because of my brother <laughs> saying it. <laughs> but thank you guys. Love you. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Meredith, welcome, lovely. Glad you could be here. So good to see you guys. 
All right, so I'm just gonna go into the basics really quickly as to, for anybody who's new to my page, um, I do try to go live on Mondays. It's not always every week, though I do try to make it consistently every week around 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and what I like to do here is just to bring forward some insight and guidance for the energy of the week using oracle cards and my own intuitive abilities um, just to give us a heads up as to what we can expect. Because when we have a little bit of an awareness, that helps us to really know how to move in flow with the universe, move in flow with the uh, divine order in what in you know what is coming through at this time, um, which helps to make things go much more smoothly within our lives. And it also lets us know a bit how to work with that energy, if you will, versus just really being um, blind to what's going on and struggling against the uh, the energy, you know, creates a bit more friction and challenge for us that way. So this gives us that heads up. And also I do a lot of sharing what I'm feeling energetically as I am an energy sensitive or an empath. And I really do feel into um, the shifts that are going on uh, in the cosmos and um, you know, I like to bring forward some information that I'm feeling that might actually assist you as I'm always looking into the deeper meaning of everything. And then I talk also in that about uh, maybe any astrological, cosmic, galactic occurrences that are going on that we might need to know about this week because it's also going to be impacting us and what it means for us. And then I do the Moon Day message and I'll pull a card for us all for this week. Again, these are not individual readings that I'm doing here this evening. I do offer individual personal readings. If you're interested, you could always send me a message privately and we can set that up. Um, I like to talk about news and announcements too, but I don't have many to talk about today. And I'll get to that in a second. And also after the Moon Day message, uh, pull a mudra for us all to work with together. And I'll talk more about why I do that when we get there. I figured, Fred. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. Hi, Rochelle. Welcome, lovely. Thank you for being here. All right, so starting just really quickly, there's not really news and announcements, but I do have some offers going on at this moment. Um, as of now, up until the 11th of November, which is this Thursday, I am offering my 2022 year ahead readings um, for the discounted rate of $77. Uh, so these readings are literally, uh, re it's basically like guidance for the entire year. So you do receive 12 months of insight and guidance for each month of the year. Um, and when I do that, I also like to pull forward at the end of the year, uh, a champion that steps forward, whether it be a goddess, an ascended master, an archangel, uh, a dragon being, something that wants to come forward really to step forward as your your guardian, your, uh, you know, uh, the one that you can call on for insight, because what that energy represents is really what you're going through mostly this year. And so they kind of stand up for you and give you that insight as to, you know, them being here and in your corner and you can call on them. So it's a really potent reading. Um, they are incredibly, um, popular. So I do already have a little bit of a uh, waiting list. So there's probably about two weeks of a waiting list right now, but that's okay. I started them early. This way people still have time to jump in and you can still get those readings before January. So, um, you know, if you decide to purchase them again, they're $77 up until the 11th. They do take about two and a half hours or two hours, I should say. Um, anywhere between an hour and a half to two hours mostly is what I'm thinking is that they normally run to. Uh, and they do come through as two pre-recorded video readings. So quite lengthy, they take a lot of time and that's why uh, my fees are what they are. But again, $77 is just until the 11th and they're gonna go up to $90 thereafter. So if you would like to book one, then I would definitely encourage you to jump in while you can get that early bird special. Um, and with that said, when you purchase one, just reach out to me, let me know, and then I will uh, just let you know what you're looking at as far as time frame goes and message you when I'm ready to begin yours, okay? The only other offer that I have going on at this time are my Blue Rose healing sessions. So there is some information on my page about these healings, so I can go, you can read them more in depth, so I don't want to 
you know, waste too much time here this evening, but um, they are also $77. And this is a one-on-one -on -one, um, video. I, don't know, I never had an essay. It's like our live video session. Um, so we do this, uh, really it's about channeling the frequency and the energy healing of the blue rose of Venus and Pleiades. And this is a very ancient, uh, light technology, I should say, that really comes forward to assist with bringing us back into our sovereignty. It helps to empower us to live our authentic lives and any challenges or difficulties that we might be going through, or even I've, I've seen like physical pain that has manifested in our bodies. Um, it really helps to bring that healing uh, like fast forward to the surface so that you can really eliminate or heal anything that has been preventing you from standing in your own power and coming more into alignment with your divine plan. Um, it also helps to facilitate bring back that uh, self-love into the self, self-worth. Um, it is a very powerful uh, energy of the divine feminine, but it isn't solely that as I noticed that it does have a beautiful balance to it within itself. And it really does help to bring in unification and the integration of our, again, whole holiness. So it's a very powerful, um, potent session and it works incredibly quickly. So uh, I would encourage if you are feeling very drawn to it or to look more into it, definitely check out the post that I shared on my page about the origins of the Venusian roses as well as the blue rose in itself and um, see if you're called to that. And I've noticed that the people that do get drawn to it, it's exactly what they needed at exactly that moment in time. And it is really facilitating massive shifts. So again, it's a live private video session that we do on Zoom. I also record it audio, um, audio wise so that you can have that to listen to over again if you feel you might need a little bit of a boost with it. So yeah, if you're interested in that, feel free to reach out. Okay, I think that's it for now. Jillian says, the value of your offerings far exceed the dollar price. I wouldn't hesitate to recommend. Oh, thank you so much, sweetheart. I, I really appreciate you sharing your experience and, um, you know, feedback on them. And I, you know, like I said, I do try to keep my prices very low because it's not about um, monetary gain for me as much as it is about living my life purpose to assist others in empowering themselves. So, uh, yeah, something to think of if you, you know, feeling a little bit called to it. Annie says, I absolutely love this and we'll do it and, and we'll do it. I get it. Oh, I think you and we'll do it again. Yes. Shifts and gifts. Thank you so much, sweetheart. Absolutely. It does seem to facilitate massive shifting and opening you up to what you're ready for in that divine time. Hi, Tracy. Welcome. And Annie, I am so happy that you made it, Keisha. Thank you for being here, lovely. Oh, I'm so happy then that you're here. Okay, make sure I didn't miss anything. All right, so with that said, I'm going to move it along into my energy forecast. So, I, it's interesting because there's quite a few things happening right now. And mainly, I want to talk about what I'm feeling and noticing uh, which is, you know, very much we are all still collectively in the, co like the cosmic womb right now. This is the time of year, uh, at least for those of us in the Southern Hemisphere, I mean in Northern Hemisphere, but I can see that even with people in the Southern Hemisphere, it just really seems to be across the board. So it really isn't seeming to matter where you are at in the world, even though in the Southern Hemisphere, you are experiencing, you know, uh, more of the spring, springtime energy. So, hey, Meredith, welcome. Hi, Catherine, welcome. So it does, but it doesn't really seem that way to me. It seems like it's happening across the board collectively, which I love because it does, it's like that um, it, nod towards integration and union um, and just working as one now, you know, and that's really where we're moving into. It's like really eliminating the illusion of separation. And so we are all collectively in the void and the void 
you know, there's a whole lot of taboo out there about, you know, darkness and shadow. And, you know, what I want people to understand is that, you know, the shadow and the light are one. They are one in the same. And it's really just that whole where, you know, that natural order and cycle of life, death and rebirth that is um, constant, you know, that only constant ever ever spinning wheel, if you will, the, the whole wheel of life. So we are at this time on the wheel in the womb space. And when we go into the womb, this is where we go deep down into ourselves to, you know, sometimes, yeah, we have to sift through some uh, dark moments or challenges or patterns and behaviors or traumas within ourselves. And um, they are coming up to the surface for us to really look at what has kept us in the dark or what has been uh, dictating our external circumstances or even the way that we interact with the world around us. So it's not something that's taboo. This is something that is like a necessary part of your journey um, as we are already light. We are already whole. Uh, but while in the human ego, uh, we sometimes perceive ourselves as not so. And that's where the illusion of the separation comes in. So it is a matter of reflecting upon these shadowy aspects that do come up or, um, you know, challenges or difficulties to really help to catapult us into the realization of already are whole. We already, you know, it's like the I am, I already am. We are already complete. Um, but there's processes sometimes that we might need to go through. So I, I really like to bring awareness to those because it's like death. It is an essential part of the journey. It's not the end of it. For some, it's the beginning. So um, it's really bringing our awareness into what needs to maybe be let go of the old identity at this time. And I think I did talk about this two weeks ago. Uh, hey, Dean. Welcome. Thanks for being here. And so this time, it feels like we're in this transitionary phase, which is normal for this time of year, where we're sifting through even... I would say like dreams at this time are at least for me being very, how do I want to explain it? They're really fast forwarding. It feels like an ascension process where you're being like plunged into, um, fears or trauma or any things that might you know, have been buried in your subconscious, they don't realize are there. And the reason that this is happening is because it's fast tracking your ascension back into the realization of your wholeness. So I don't want to say the it's a fast tracking ascension into wholeness because I want to stress that you already are whole. But that realization can't just happen by the snap of fingers. Uh, you know, sometimes it takes some clearing out and sifting through for you to be able to perceive where you are, where you are and who you are, if that makes sense. So I know that can be a little bit tricky um, to understand, but these dreams and things that are really kind of diving us down into there is helping us to experience a lot of what we can experience in waking life. It's having us do the difficult work sometimes in a dream state. Uh, at this time, we also have a lot of cycles and circumstances and situations that are coming to an end. And, you know, sometimes it's really difficult to let those things go. And I feel like being in the womb, this is where the magic happens. It's like literal being in the womb of you know, gestation where you are waiting to be born, what is happening to the outside world? It might, it might be perceived as that waiting, but what is going on beneath the surface and in the womb is this amazing development that's happening. And in that development, you're being shielded, sheltered, and protected. So that's where we're at right now. But what's something really interesting that's also been happening is on almost like the complete opposite end of that spectrum is this whole 
pulling up out of. You know, I really feel like somebody just kind of reached into this dark, murky water and pulled and yanked me back up out of it. And so there's times where I feel like I get plunged back in and pulled right back up and it's happening really fast. So it's not like where we'll go through like months of this and experience it and then boom, we're on the other side of it. Nope, this is happening like in and out, in and out on a daily basis. So why this is happening is I feel like at the same exact time we are having the integration of what happened. So the, the awarenesses that you have for maybe like a situation that happened that was difficult and challenging, you recognize it's not working anymore, you've got to let it go, or something, maybe an argument happened and something came up to the surface, um, it's then giving you the opportunity to integrate it and then move back up again and align with the new vibration. So once you get to that new vibration, you get the next opportunity to dive back in and deal with something else. So it really is fast track. And I do feel like that's gonna t continue to happen throughout the rest of this year because we are really preparing for this massive evolution that is taking us to the next level with 2022. So it's like we've got to hurry up and get anything that's like, you know, it's like when you, you, you're you buying a house or selling a house, you got to hurry up and clear out and get the rest of your stuff out of the old place. That's really what's happening. So with that coming back out, it's like we're getting glimpses of this new inspiration and energy that wants to come into your life that wants to really take you to the next level, really help to completely open your eyes to a whole new world and a whole new identity for yourself. So it really is a shift in identity, in who you are and who you have been in the world. And that's happening obviously on a greater level in the collective in our world as we know it. And we see that happening already. So it's really there's this time of really making our peace with what can't go with us anymore or who we no longer are. And in that territory, there's going to be a lot of um, detaching. And while we detach, you know, that can be very challenging. Um, and it doesn't have to be um, ugly or nasty but it is important for you to draw those boundaries right now. It is really important for us to assert ourselves and no longer just talk about them or wait for them. It's about being them. It is about truly putting our money where our mouths are and drawing the boundaries around us to ensure that nothing is preventing us from moving into what we want to, if that makes sense. So Venus, you know, I always talk about Venus as uh, is one of my uh, master uh, planets, and it is on, on, honestly uh, Earth's sister. So with it being that, it's like our twin, and it is a planet of higher love, uh, higher wisdom, and uh, very powerful energy of unity. And with this energy, with Venus, we are most impacted by it. So Venus right now actually just moved into... Um, on her ascension path, and you've heard me talk about this before, she moves through her journey through seven gateways on her ascension journey in the same way she moves down on descending into darkness, into the other world um, on her descent journey back through those seven gateways. But she's on the rise right now as the evening star. So as she's rising, she actually just rose into yesterday, I believe it was, the seventh gateway as the crown chakra. And what, what basically what that means is that she is reclaiming those things that were taken from her or where she had given her power away in situations. So as she's doing this, now she's putting her crown back on her head. So this is now her coming into and opening up her crown to reconnect into that higher aspect that she already is, her higher ascended aspect. And so we too are doing the same thing. So our crown chakras are being opened at this time to literally connect us like antennas into 
that higher aspect of self that we all ready are so it's reconnecting us as venus did or also referred to as inanna on this journey um connecting us as those uh bridges between heaven and earth and now she is ascending back to love so that is essentially what's happening to us as we are coming back into our sovereign selves back into our empowerment and with that said we are reclaiming those pieces of ourselves that we have you know kind of put on the side or you know have let go because of situations in the past or where we have actually given those powers away so being that we are reclaiming that now i've seen it as a literally like a crowning because we are still in the womb we are still in that void space where the work is happening but you can begin to now see that we're coming up out of it where we're starting to our antennas are turned on and we are beginning to receive direct information insight inspiration inspiration from our divine self so this is basically like divine alignment which is then happening to move us into our divine pathways and into the divine plan, also simultaneously happening with Earth to align us more into that higher timelines of, of higher vibration and love. So you can literally see this as like a crowning coming out of the womb. That's how I feel it. That's what I perceive it to be. So as we are crowning, we're making our entrance and our debuts into the new world. So that means it's like having a reincarnation, our souls rebirth while still alive, incarnated on earth, which is not, is, is almost like, it, it's like something that's never happened before, not in this way. You know, when you incarnate, you go through the whole physical life and death process. This is like, we're not having to go through the life and death, pro death and process. I'm sorry, so tongue tied today. We're not having to go through that the way that we did in times past. It's like we are having these opportunities of ascension while incarnated. So these, this is really like you stepping into the world for the first time. And this process is going to continue through December. I foresee up until the solstice, which is in alignment with the birth of the sun, the return of the light. So winter solstice around December 21st or so. Um, and in this time frame, there's so many different alignments happening that are like rapid ev evolution and massive shifting going on. So we actually had, was it this full moon coming is actually going to be, and I think it's on the 19th, if I'm not mistaken of November, this full moon coming is actually going to be the first of an eclipse season that's going to be very powerful, helping, helping to shift us re more into that embodiment of this new identity, if that makes sense. So this week alone, we have the 1111 gateway on Thursday. Now, 11s hold the number vibration of ascension, of divine alignment, new thresholds being presented or opened to us and man instant manifesting so we you can see that when we have that double 11 there the 11 11 we are really having this massive gateway that's acting as a, almost like i see it as you're playing video games and you hit a certain checkpoint and it push it real fast through the video through the uh you know if you're on a race or whatever it might be think of mario kart because that's what i'm seeing in my head and you hit that checkpoint and all of a sudden you zoom like fast forward really fast. That's what's happening with the 1111. But what that's doing is actually a divine alignment for as you crown, you're actually crowning at the same time into your divine self. So now this is the time for us to really be looking at what we want to create going forward and what we don't want anymore. And I don't mean that in a way that I've said it in the past and other people have said that in the past is like with new moons and we're just like manifesting what do we want in our lives. It's not like that. It's on a bigger scale. I want you to think bigger. It's more in terms of what are you here to do? Who are you here to be? Uh, and really helping you to make those inspirations, wisdoms, 
actually a physical embodiment here to really step into those roles. And it's really helping us to recognize at the same time, seeing through new eyes who we have been and how we've had to play those roles based upon woundings, based upon conditionings, and how we see that this isn't, it taught me, it served me for a time, but it no longer does. So now you might really feel completely foreign in the world that you're in because you are now realizing the most raw primal aspect of yourself and who you are. And this is about making the impossible possible, you know, miracles really happening and really being able to achieve this, these levels of uh, prosperity and abundance that weren't previously available to us because we had to be on those looping cycles and patterns that we were stuck in. But now as we are going through that crowning process of that rebirth, we're starting at this space of a completely new existence that there is no cycles and energy imprints that are dictating our circumstances. It's like you're creating as you go. So now, obviously, more than ever, it is so important to be mindful of what you are saying to yourself, uh, what you are perceiving of what you're capable of, you know, because you're creating the reality that you're living. And it's going to ha- like literally like there's no bridge before you. But as you say something, think something, do something, you create the next step on the bridge and you're literally building that bridge as you go. Okay, so I hope that that makes sense to everybody. So a very powerful time, especially with the instant manifesting and the powerful alignment happening with that 1111 gateway. I really want to just bring that awareness to everybody to focus on the thing that's right in front of you. Take it, pull it out of the air, pull it out of the ethers, and ground that into reality. Okay. All right. So I hope that makes sense. That's, like I said, when I went to go into like what I've been feeling, it's incredibly complicated. And I myself have really been sitting. And here's another thing that probably I should say is that in order for me to really fully decipher all that's coming to me and all that's coming in, I've been being guided more and more to sit in stillness outside in nature and to really, because what's happening when you're sitting outside in nature is your energy is automatically getting grounded. And when we are in our, when we're in our headspace, we are not really grounded. We are, you know, again, it's the element of air, but the element of air is essential for that divine inspiration to flow through and to come in. But now it's a matter of literally anchoring those inspirations and that element of air into earth for it to become physically manifest if that makes sense so it's also helping to keep you grounded to be able to fully hear see the vision and the messages coming forward and really what you're being called to another thing that i've really been being drawn to this past two weeks is animism and the strong reminder of how everything is interacting with you and responding to you from the ravens that are answering my call from you know when I ask for you know guidance or clarity or when I think something and they're out there you know showing themselves or the crows that are out there showing themselves or you know the way that the leaves are moving and the whispering messages, there is spirit and life in everything. And that spirit and life is you. So why wouldn't it be communicating to you? Why wouldn't it be responding to you? See what I'm saying? And I'm being more and more called for us to step outside of that tunnel vision and remember that strong interconnectedness of everything around us and how we, I literally had a dream the other night that I was actually being, it looked at first like I was being sewn back together. And the more that I looked at it, I saw that there was a spider in the background of this weaving 
that was being, I couldn't see who was doing the weaving, but I could just see that it was happening to me and I was in the center of it. And all these strands were being woven back into me. And what that symbolically interpreted, you know, to me, what that meant was that I was being more, I was becoming more aware of the interweaving or wovenness of the threads of everything that exists and the connection between everything and how everything is contracting and expanding for me to me because of me. Does that make sense? So also at the same time, um, the other day, um, it was the same time I think as Venus moved into, or the day before Venus moved into the crown chakra, um, my, my daughter's boyfriend was actually, uh, in an area where there are, you know, you know, of nature and lots of like debris ends up kind of like being come off from the highway and whatnot. And he actually stumbled upon, um, an almost fully intact antler from obviously from a stag, from a deer. And, you know, he's really excited about it and he came and he knows that I'm very much into, you know, creating altars and, you know, nature and whatnot. So he came and he present, he gave it to me. And at first I knew there was a message coming in with it, but I didn't really fully understand the message. And then my beautiful friend Jillian actually came across uh, an article or a post on Facebook by Judith Downs the other day at the same exact time and said, wow, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to believe this. If you haven't already seen this, let me share this with you. Judith Downs had also come across an almost fully intact antler. And the message that she had taken away from it was that connection to our crown chakras and our spiritual antenna being more uh, like fully activated or we're now, you know, having moved through those uh, blockage within ourselves, we're being able to actually open up and fully tap into our divine antenna and connection into, um, you know, our higher selves or source. And so it was like real, it's just real powerful how everything is kind of really falling into that alignment right now with that. Everything is talking to you. Everything is communicating with you or helping you, guiding you as well as responding to you. So just having us all be more aware of that is really going to make a big difference on us as individuals, but also us as humans. So, okay. I hope that makes sense. Everybody and didn't seem too rambly. So I don't know if any of you have been really noticing anything like that going on lately too, but I think two other people sent me videos too this week with deer in them. I think a deer even hit my hit my husband's car. I say it hit my husband's car last week because he stopped to let deer go. And even though he was completely stopped in the middle of the road, one just turned around and just plowed right into him anyway, <laughs> even though he was stopped. So we all were like, that's really strange. You know, normally it's, you, you know, you hit a deer, but the deer literally dove right into you. So it's interesting with the messages coming in. Okay. All right. Yeah, the recrowning Meredith, perfect. She will station retrograde, yes, December 19th at 26 degrees of Capricorn, and she's currently in Capricorn. She will be here, I think. This is probably the longest that she'll be in a, a sign, as she's not normally this long in signs. So that's really interesting within itself. And now we're talking about antlers and that whole, you know, we got Capricorn, which is the sea goat. Is that what, it, is that what it's supposed to be, the sea goat? it has the antlers so it's very interesting you know and Capricorn is an earth sign as well so we've got and actually one of the things that I'm working more with is I lack Capricorn in my chart so I'm actually bringing more Capricorn into my body through herbs and whatnot and like that so really interesting bring more earth there nothing is coincidence you say right at solstice perfect timing right Yes, I'm in a space of broader perspective and incoming messages. This energy is aligned for me also. Perfect. She starts to slow down now. She begins to shift into her descent. Yes, and uh, I believe she'll start her descent journey 
Um, she goes into that space of like, you know, void and then she'll actually just start her descent journey and the new petal of a new, of the flower of Venus itself, uh, first week of January. So loving it. (laughs) Margot. Hey, Lynette. Welcome. Gorgeous. You just missed the energy forecast, but you know, it's there available on replay. So with that said, I'm uh, deciding to work with the Priestess of the Light Oracle this week to bring forward our message. (laughs) I know I love to talk about you. I love to talk about it because, you know, there's not many people that, you know, follow it because it's, you know, not only it's a really complex, it's complex stuff, you know, so it's like talk to some people and they're just like, "Mm, all right, you know. And I talk about it to my clients and they're just like, oh, okay, you know, but then, you know, have somebody to actually tracks it and helps understand it too. You know, it's awesome. So thank you. So working with the priestess of the light Oracle and this deck is by Sandra Ann Taylor and Kimberly Weber. Okay. So I'm just going to ask you all to come into sacred space with me. So just close your eyes for a second. If you can, obviously safely, depending upon your surroundings and just take a nice deep breath in and release. really feeling all that stress tension in your body just begin to release and ground it out just take another deep breath in and release we're dropping our minds down into our heart space into our feeling center One last deep breath in and release. All right. Hi, Eileen. Welcome, lovely. And just asking what guidance comes forward for the collective good for the week of November 8th, 2021. This is interesting because while I was just doing that centering, I was actually seeing the heart chakra mandala actually be shown to me. And I thought, well, I just told everybody to kind of drop down into your heart space. So no, it's probably why I saw it, right? The card is actually healing the heart and it says the power of self-love. Look at that. And she has, I don't think I've ever noticed this before because it blends so well. She has antlers on her head. Look at that. I love it. So the card itself is a 27, which breaks down numerically to be a nine, which really does go into what I was talking about in the energy forecast about letting go of those things that are of the old identity and the old self and what no longer serves you and old pat that includes you know old beliefs that were limiting and destructive to yourself um, or to others around you old habits old um, you know behaviors people in your life that just you know you're no longer in alignment vibrational wise or um, you're just not working out anymore. Um, also, you know, could be jobs, could be relocation, um, really making moves now and making peace as we release the old to allow it to, you know, and I always feel like this is so morbid when I say it, but really there's not a better word for it. It's allowing the old to die, but allowing to do so gracefully with compassion and peace in our hearts. So as we do this, I mean, it takes a whole lot of healing. It takes a whole lot of composure. It takes a whole lot of grace to be able to let things go with love. And in order to be able to step into these new identities and these new reality and I say new identities guys but really you know this is us at our rawest self it's that it's us and who we always have been at our core before 
all of the layers of wounding and, you know, conditioning were kind of placed upon us or we took on. But it takes a whole lot of, you know, going through your processes to step into that space, to even be able to step into that space, to be ready to make that peace, is to really have healed the heart. Because a lot of the things that we've gone through, um, you know, and stayed in these situations or even not having realized situations um, is normally because we are in a space of uh, that woundedness or unable to see beyond it because we're still needing to learn um, and there's still something to be healed or there's still some growing that needs to happen before we can actually transcend to the next level. So it is a matter of bringing that awareness of wholeness into your heart centers. And I want to say that I actually saw a post by somebody and I shared it on my personal page. It was either yesterday or today of, is it Juno crossing the galactic center, which is actually bringing an opening to our heart chakras. And I find that interesting because Venus being so prominent right now, um, Venus does rule over the heart chakra as well. It rules over the sacral chakra, but also very much about the heart center as it is all about that divine higher love. So this is really bringing that peace and healing into our hearts that does allow us to love ourselves. Venus also is about working with that self-love and that self-worth and bringing you into that state, state of knowing what you are worthy of and deserving of. So bringing that healing and peace to our hearts is really going to be essential as we move through the energy this week. And I, I, I don't know if I want to say it's essential, but it is, it is the theme. And I do feel like it's just very, it's happening very organically as well. So I was looking at what Meredith just said. Sorry. Hi, Leandra. Welcome. Hi, Jerry. When you said processes, I heard Saturn's audit being that Capricorn expression is ruled by the energy of Saturn, really looking for where we can find the opportunity and value in our own processes. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for saying that. I actually love that. I think it's beautiful. Um, Moon joined Juno is like a tongue twister there. Moon joined Juno before joining Venus today. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. So it was, I knew it was something that I saw. Um, and Juno is an asteroid. Am I, is that correct? I'm always like that part of the natal charts and astrology is a bit tricky. Um, but the moon being that deep, uh, you know, that hidden aspect of yourself, you know, and your divine, uh, you know, connecting into more of your instincts, your intuition and that sacred feminine self. So, and when you got here, I was going to say something about asteroid Juno. Oh my God, look, there you go. All right. So boom. Love you for being here. So we're right on cue there. So yeah, this is actually bringing up that opening. So as we're opening up our crown, which is now, I just heard, feeling safe to do, as you're opening up your crown, it does naturally allow you to open up your heart space because essentially your divine essence is, yes, we can reconnect and tap into through our higher chakras, but our div but divine God, goddess, love, all source is in our hearts and our truest self and our truest voice will always come from the heart. So do you see, it's like the gateway has now been at, accessed through the crown. So as we crown, we're opening the heart at the same time. So very interesting there. So this week is going to be all about self-love, everybody. And I love that she is rocking the antlers as we talked about that in the energy forecast right before I pulled Moon Day or moon, the Moon Day message. So it is about us having that stillness to be able to open, to connect and to receive that inspiration, the information, the insight, and the, just your divine, you know, the divine voice that wants to flow through you, you know, your divine voice. And in doing so, it does allow you to follow your heart. And now, again, you heard me. I'm sorry, Anubis is going off in the background, which is also no coincidence. 
as we are following our hearts and the voice that calls us to really step more into who we are, what we are worthy of, and what we're capable of here. What is meant for you, you see? So really honoring you. And again, I, I just want to go back to the boundaries too, because I'm seeing it. That's why I'm going like this, because it's what I'm seeing happening around me right now. I see like these boundaries being drawn where it's like you're not compromising yourself, not compromising your, you know, what you are deserving of and worthy of and what you want to do, what you want to create. And of course, I don't mean the type of compromise that is like, you know, you know, there are always compromises that need to be made, but I feel like this is a, a very important time about drawing the boundaries around how you honor yourself, how you honor your way of creative expression here and what you do to um, put that into action. So it's like really making the priority. So it's important to draw boundaries regarding anything that takes your time away from that. Important to draw boundaries away from maybe any negative self-talk that you have. Important to draw boundaries around others that are draining of your life force energy around that could be not just people that could be jobs that could be, you know, um, things that you give your energy out to. So you might need to draw some boundaries on yourself this week because it is all about how you love yourself and how you honor yourself and how you hold yourself in sacred space as well. Okay. So important. Thank you for that, Meredith. Yeah, that crown and heart, you know, that's, that's the one, that's that oneness there. Boundaries, armadillo card and totem came forward for me today. Wow, look at that. You don't say. So yes, yeah, so that is our message, everybody. It is healing the heart this week through self-love. Okay? All right. So everything is the message. Everything that came forward so far today is the message. And those of you who just popped in or popped in a little late, um, I did go over what is called my energy or empathy forecast, which did add into kind of what's the undercurrent, if you will, of what I'm feeling is going on too. Okay. Mudra time. All right. So I work with mudras because I'm all about empowering ourselves and then having the tools to empower, to continue to help ourselves. And it's one thing to talk about the message and hear it said, and it's another thing to actually apply it to our lives. And I do feel like mudras actually allows us to do that. It literally is taking your power into your hands. As the word mudra is Sanskrit for seal. And those are energetic activation seals that are formed with our hands. And in our hands, we have palm chakras. In our fingers, we are connected to the elements. And these act as uh, activators, if you will or triggers, but in the good trigger way, uh, that link into when formed, they link into our energy centers or our chakras. And our chakras are linked into our uh, four main bodies. We do have more than that, but the four main bodies, so the physical, emotional, mental, and your spiritual. So as you're connecting and you're actually forming these, you are setting intentions, but also channeling life force energy into those centers, which can remove blockage, energetic blockage that you might have built up in there over time. Um, that helps to facilitate that healthy flow and breathing life into those energy centers, which ripples out into those bodies. So in that process, it can help to alleviate emotional discord and imbalances, mental imbalances, limiting thought forms and beliefs, shifting mental thought patterns. It can also help to alleviate physical ailments or dis-ease that you have in your physical body. It can also help to bring an expansion of our consciousness and enlightenment. So they are incredibly powerful tools and using them will help to facilitate the growth of the message that comes forward for the week. So there are hundreds and hundreds of different mudras out there. I do work with a deck called Mudras for Awakening the Energy Body by Alison DeNicola as it just helps to kind of hone in on what mudra really wants to come forward for us this week. And um, how I do this is I'll pull the, I'll pull the mudra and then I'll show it to you. We'll go over it and then we can work together doing it. And then I'll post it on my page and you can work with it all week long. Okay. 
I think that covers everything. Sometimes these mudras do come with a caution because they are so powerful. Again, you're channeling energy. So that can sometimes overstimulate an area in your physical body that you may already suffer from some sort of discomfort in. And I will let you know in advance this way, uh, you know, if the mudra comes with a caution, this way it will be up to you as to whether or not you choose to work with it anyway, um, as it might just bring a little bit of irritation to that area. All right. Hi, Dawn. Welcome, gorgeous, happy moon day. Yeah, you're definitely going to catch this one. It seems to be like a very big week. Okay. All right. So now just asking for a mudra that comes forward to assist us all as a collective goes hand in hand with our message for the week of November 8th, 2021. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to still pull for another mudra, but it's the solar plexus chakra, which is interesting considering we're working with crown and heart. And the solar plexus or Manipura is the chakra that actually is our power center or known as our power center. It is our life force center and, you know, where our vitality, our fearlessness, our courageousness comes from. And I feel like that's absolutely going to come into play this week, considering we are maybe taking some, making some changes or coming into decisions that are more empowering of ourselves and you know, really kind of standing more in self-love and self-worth. So really depending upon how that plays out for each of us. But it is our third chakra uh, that is located just above our navel. It is ruled obviously by the color of yellow, like the golden sun. It is known as the city of gems. And it's sound that you can work with to actually bring more energy and vitality into the center is Ram like a ram, R-A-M. Interesting, we've been talking about the antlers. Um, obviously, golden yellow. Its symbol is the 10-petal yellow lotus flower. And it rules over digestion and the pancreas on our physical bodies. Its element is fire. Its qualities are vitality, determination, conscious action, everyone, and divine will. Look at that. Perfect. All right, so I am still going to ask for a mudra that wants to come in. Ooh, all right. Interesting. It is the Bu Mudra, known as the grounding mudra. And what did I say about being outside in nature? Because we want to anchor and ground this new energy. We want to ground these inspirations and our basically new identity into reality or our new projects and creations. It assists with grounding, stability, connection to the physical body. It reduces stress and blood pressure and activates your root chakra. Look at all these chakras coming into play this week. This one does not come with the caution, so everybody is free to work with it. And so how you do this is you're just going to extend the index and middle fingers downward, inverted, to make a V-shaped or peace signs with both hands. You curl the pinky and ring finger towards the palms and place the thumb fingertips, the thumbs on the fingertips lightly. You're going to extend and bring the tips of the middle and index fingers to the ground or the tops of the thighs if you're sitting, okay? So like this, and then sitting just at the tops of your thighs with both hands, okay? Just close your eyes and take a nice deep breath in. And release. Once again, nice deep breath in. And release. One more deep breath in. And release. And you can state, grounded to the earth, 
I receive support and abundance. Grounded to the earth, I receive support and abundance. Grounded to the earth, I receive support and abundance. And so it is. And you can open your eyes. That is probably the most common mudra that I recommend to clients that are uh, struggling with anxiety, overwhelm, um, not able to focus, not really able to um, see a vision clearly. That's the most common one because it is so easy and so effective. So I don't know about you or how grounded you feel right now, but I literally feel like as if I was just sucked down into the like roots of a tree and really calm and stable. So as you're going through things, you know, or if you're trying to kind of, you know, reflect on something or some decisions, maybe work on utilizing that Buddha mudra first and really get yourself into that space. And then you can open up and connect to receive some insight from your higher selves. Um, I'll post it on my page so that you can work with it all week long. Uh, save it to your phone or something. And, um, you know, we work with it in increments of threes. So with the, with the breaths. So if you, you know, like today you did three, tomorrow maybe you want to start with moving into doing it with six breaths, the next day nine breaths and so on and so forth just helps to, you know, the more that you do, the more that it assists. Okay. Yeah, Meredith, right? Absolutely. All right, everyone. So that is the Moon Day message for this week. I hope that you enjoyed it and it does help you as you go through this energy this week, remembering so much that is happening is really just to help to bring us back to love. And so that starts with you loving you. All right. So much love to all. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your week and a wonderful weekend. And I do look forward to seeing you next Monday, if possible. You're welcome. Bye-bye.